Hi, my name is Victoria Kavarik. I'm one of the pastors here at Walnut Hill and I want to welcome you to the conversation today. We are looking at what it means to say yes to God in seasons of suffering. I'm so glad that is say yes to God in seasons of suffering and not just say yes to suffering. But we're looking at that challenging topic of how do we discover God in places that are painful and hard. And, and we want to acknowledge that each of our journeys are different. Um, but today, I am so blessed to be here with Peter Scalzo. Peter is part of our church family. He has been here forever. <laughs> we just worked out it was 34 years. Was it? Yeah, 34 years. So 34 years at One at Hell, and yeah. life has been interesting. Yes, it has. So I'm so glad yes, you're has. here and willing to share about that. Can yeah. you give us some insights? Yeah, well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Um, I was thinking about this topic mm -hmm. of suffering and, you know, we all experience trials and hardships. Uh, and for me, what I wanted to talk about today is really those deep seasons of suffering, those walls, mm -hmm. dark nights of the soul, mm -hmm. earthquake events in our, in our lives. And really... Um, I had three, but I'm really going to focus on one. But uh, I'll just mention the three. The, uh, the first one, which was about a five to six year period in my life, was traveling with my daughter through a drug addiction journey, which was uh, two years of rehab and an overdose and all that. Thankfully, she's fine today. Good. Um, and then my second uh, season uh, has been a marriage failure mm -hmm. uh, and ended up with an actual divorce. So uh, that's been a very difficult season for me. Uh, but what I'd really like to focus on today is the mm -hmm. season of a 15-year cancer journey. Uh, and I've been pretty public about that mm -hmm. journey, Victoria. Um, and so, you know, I just to sort of summarize what's mm -hmm. happened in that yeah. journey, just to give some context. Uh, in 2005 is the first time that I was diagnosed with cancer, I was down at Memorial Sloan Kettering, it was bladder, and they took out my whole uh, lower urinary system, the bladder, ureters, prostate, all that, and created a reservoir inside of me out of intestinal tissue, so it was major surgery down there. And that launched this 15 year, it's been uh, really 15 major surgeries. Uh, I lost count of procedures and tests, mm. uh, but it's been chemo rinses, radiation, I've been on, um, immunotherapy infusions now for almost four years every three weeks. Um, and what I also like to emphasize is that twice a Memorial Sloan Kettering said, just send them home mm. and have them call hospice care. Sure. Um, and so what does it look like as a Christian yes. when I have to integrate my faith mm -hmm. into that scenario? What yeah. does that look like for yeah. me? So. so what has it looked like for you? Yeah, so we're, we're just going to launch right into this. Just jump right in. Yeah. <laughs> well, why not, right? <laughs> why not? So, um, you know, I, there is one event uh, that's a, a very significant event for me, and it happened on November 2nd of 2015. Yeah. Um, and I was at Lenox Hill Hospital in Manhattan. And you know where I was because you visited I me. Did. Clive came to visit yep. me, um, which was wonderful. But I was... Uh, I had a 10-hour surgery with three top urologic surgeons, and Memorial Sloan Kettering couldn't handle my case anymore, so I ended up over there. And my head surgeon said, this was one of the most complex surgeries I've ever done wow. in urology, and he's a world leader. But as I, as I went into that surgery, it was my 14th surgery, as I went into it, I thought the news was going to be good. You know, mm. people prophesied, prayed over me. This this will be great. This will work out great. Beautiful. And when I woke up um, in ICU, uh, it was anything but mm. great. And my head surgeon came in and he said there was cancer everywhere, wow. wrapped around your aorta, all throughout the ureters, all mm -hmm. throughout your system there. And, um, and he just said, you know, we're going to, we can try a high powered chemo, but sure. it looks like yeah. this will be an end of life process. Um, and so here I am with six children, a wow. busy law practice, yeah. uh, and, and a, a deep Christian, a mm -hmm. surrendered Christian. So mm -hmm. uh, how, do I, how do I process that? Mm -hmm. And so what happened was, uh, and this is my dark night of the soul, which is a phrase from St. John of the Cross, 
it's a place where you find yourself where you don't see God at all. I mean, mm -hmm. in this place, in that ICU uh, room, I, I thought God had left me. Mm -hmm. And I, I went into a deep depression. I went into a place of despair. It was the darkest place that I've mm -hmm. ever been. Um, and just a place of deep abiding fear, anger, and sadness. And um, I got stuck. Yeah. I got stuck in that place. Yeah. And I didn't know how to get out of that mm -hmm. place. Um, and I was sinking deeper and deeper. Sure. Um, and it, it went on for days. I was down there 19 days, but the days mm -hmm. in ICU were about six days. Um, and can I talk about how? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So one of my buddies here who we all know and love, Johnny D, mm -hmm. uh, had uh, gotten down on his knees and said, what, what can I do for Peter? Because he had texted me and say, and said, you know, how's it going? And I said, it's dark and getting darker, and I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Uh, I didn't hear from God. I, I felt helpless and hopeless. Mm. Uh, and so he, he said the Lord told him to bring me down a journal. Mm -hmm. And I had a policy, no visitors, but he showed up in my mm -hmm. room. He dropped this journal on my chest, and I'm like, what are you doing here, and what is this? <laughs> And, uh, but I wallowed in this place of despair mm. and, I, and I hated that place. Yeah. But I didn't know, you didn't know how to get out of it. And so finally I, took a, I picked up that journal and what, what God had told Johnny D, which I didn't know, is Peter needed to express his feelings. Mm -hmm. He needs to get this out. Mm -hmm. And I had a habit of stuffing feelings and mm -hmm. emotions. And so what happened was I, I picked up that journal and uh, I just started to write. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was raw at first. It yeah. was kind of like when you're reading the Psalms where David mm -hmm. just sort of so, yeah. <laughs> goes it's through real, depression, right? despair. Yeah. 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 And, um, and God, I can honestly say that Jesus rescued me. Mm -hmm. He visited me. He, mm -hmm. he let me know that he had been there. But I think um, as I look back on this dark night of the soul and on the dark nights of the soul for me, what it has meant for me is um, a greater place of brokenness. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that I'm not in control. <laughs> That's a hard one to learn. And I, I want to ask you about <laughs> that time in your life. Yeah. Uh, I'll just you, finish you. with this. <laughs> I'll just finish with this. That it's, it was a greater, it's, there's this greater brokenness that happened to me. Mm -hmm. I knew I was not in control. Kind of like blessed are the poor in spirit yeah. moment. Yeah. And then this greater um, waiting on God, kind mm -hmm. of patience under suffering, mm -hmm. endurance word that, that's yeah. used of Job, that kind of a thing. Yeah. So, but yeah. tell me, yeah. tell me about a time For in me, your life. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's wonderful to ask the questions. It's very challenging when one has to answer the questions. And um, everyone's journey of suffering is different. For me, um, when I was 25, I decided that was a good time to get married. Yeah, 25 just seemed like a perfect age. And um, I went to get married at 25, and I didn't. I uh, moved to the US at the beginning of my 30s, and I was still single. A bunch of my friends actually teased me that I would find my man in, in America, but it, it didn't really happen. And I, I got to this moment, um, I was 34, and it was the fall and I had this picture in my head. I was praying and I had this picture in my head. And basically, it was an engagement ring and my two hands handing the ring over. Wow. And that was the picture from, from this direction. Wow. And um, I knew exactly what it meant. Wow. I felt like God was calling me to surrender my desire to get married. And I said, absolutely not. <laughs> I knew I couldn't surrender and bargain. It was, it was surrender or don't surrender. And if I surrendered, there was a chance I would never get married. And I had always wanted to get married. And uh, I wish I could say, you know, I did the good, honorable thing and quickly surrendered and it was beautiful, but that would be, that would be lying. It took me pretty much a year, basically a year of wrestling. I journaled a lot and I read a lot of scripture. I talked a lot to God and a friend of mine helped me paint that picture. And uh, 
it took most of that year and I finished painting that picture at the end of, of August, beginning of September. And I laid it down. Now the story has a beautiful ending because about two weeks later, um, somebody in church came up to me and says, I believe that things are going to change for you, Vicky. And then someone else came up to me and said, we have to have to pray. God is going to answer the desires of your heart and you better be ready for it. And then one of the elders prayed for me that God would answer my prayers for me, not just my prayers for everyone else. And the very next Sunday, the man who would become my husband asked me on a date. <laughs> so for me, um, I had a happy ending with that story. But the wrestle of would I trust God was something that I wanted. Would I trust that he had a better plan for my life? That was the struggle yeah. uh, of laying it down. And um, Tell me about what did that process look like for you? Of, of laying it down? Yeah. Um, I journaled a lot. Uh, I wrote a lot. I taught with friends. I talked to God. But for me, the mm -hmm. ultimate laying was to paint it. Wow. Okay. So it was the painting that kind of sealed the deal for me. <laughs> it yeah. was like, I've seen the picture. I've painted the picture. I've given it to God. Wow. And that's all I can do with that. When you had that moment where you surrendered or let it go. Yeah. What was that? What, did it feel? what, was, what was going on in you at that point? Hmm. I guess the struggle was over, right? I stopped fighting. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> I fought. Yeah. I stopped fighting. Yeah. And I laid it down. Yeah, that's beautiful. Was that similar for you, the stop fighting, or, or are you not a... You don't... Oh, do you no, fight? I, I think I... Oh, yeah, I think I do. I'm, I think I'm a pretty rebellious guy. Mm -hmm. Like, when I... It was so funny because... At, that, at, the, at the hospital when I started, when God started to download what I call truths, I yeah. wrote down 23 truths and I would weep when I got them. But, hmm. you know, I felt like, um, like I had disappointed God, like I was hmm. a failure. Hmm. And I had, uh, I had not trusted him. Hmm. I had said to him, you're, you're not doing what I want you to do. Hmm. And um, what what the strong sense I had was of him, it's very beautiful to me, but him wrapping mm. his arms around mm. me and just loving on me, mm. like grieving with me and, and mm. just that, that moment of just absolute intimacy with Jesus where it's okay that I, that I struggled, you know, that I couldn't surrender right mm -hmm. then, that I had to go through this process. Yeah. Um, I think for me that's sort of the saying yes to Jesus is... Mm -hmm. Is, is am I going to, yeah. you know, surrender to him? Yeah. And it, it's interesting because I think some of this is about not trying to have it all together. Mm. Um, so for me, there's been two mm. um, challenging, very challenging seasons. Yeah. One was singleness and the other was childlessness. And I'll, I'll never forget... Um, I'll never forget the phone call on a Thursday from the doctor that basically told my husband and I that we probably would never have children. And I was supposed to preach on Sunday. <laughs> oh. And I was just like, how can I stand up in front of God's people? I've got nothing to give them. Oh. What do I do? <laughs> yeah. It's just like my world just fell apart. Um, I had... And... Um, I ended up calling my brother, who's also a preacher, mm. my brother Gavin, and uh, they'd been through this horrendous journey where their uh, little baby boy in the womb had multiple mm. um, yeah, blood transfusions, uh, nine in the womb and a number afterwards, and he actually survived, but Gavin knew what it was to preach in the midst of a really hard season, so I said to him, I said, what am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to preach on, on Sunday. And I said, I, I, we just got this news. I've got nothing to say. Mm. And Gavin said to me, he says, my experience is that those are the moments that are the most powerful. Mm. When you just trust God that he has something to say to his people, and he will. He's faithful. And I know 
I know that, I guess that for me was a, was a moment of feeling very carried by God, trusting that he had something for his people. And, and there's something that can be beautiful, but it doesn't deny the struggle of those moments right, as right, well. And I guess that's right. part of what we want to be honest about the struggle. And yet um, yeah. the beauty in the struggle of finding, of finding God's peace or at least his presence. Yeah, I think um, for me within the context of, of that amount of brokenness, yeah. this is a dream of yours that mm. was shattered at that point. Yeah. Yeah. But you had to get up. And I know the show must go on kind of thought, but you know, it's, for me, it hasn't been about white knuckling it. It's been mm. about um, what does it look like to, to surrender and trust. Mm. You know, when I was in the hospital, I've been in, of course, many times in the hospitals, but when I get that news, in 2017 also I got the news I had tumors all throughout my mm -hmm. urinary system because in 2015 I entered the metastatic cancer world mm -hmm. which is a different mm -hmm. world and um, you know there's a no cure world kind sure. of thing so but anyway I was in this place in the hospital the fellow came in crying but they basically mm -hmm. had to say you have to stop working and we're pretty much mm -hmm. done here and I said to the Lord, can I trust you with my soul, with my spirit, with mm -hmm. my life? <laughs> I mean, I knew here, but my heart had to say, I deliver mm. this stuff to you. Yes. I mean, and I could see how it's a shattered dream. Mm -hmm. T tell me about your dream about that was shared. I mean, you had this dream about having children, right? Yeah. And yeah. So I always thought I would um, <laughs> have at least four kids, big, noisy household, just the way I grew up, right? And um, I will never forget preaching a sermon. And it was as I was, as I was sharing, I was actually being real about the season we were going through as part of an illustration. It was as if I had this picture of all the different things I'd expected to come from life, as if they were on glass uh, printed on, on panes of glass and there I was on the platform downstairs in, in Bethel and um, I had all these paintings of like me and a husband and these kids and the, you know the, the life I thought I was going to have and it was as if those panes of, of um, those pictures on those panes it's as if they went one by one crashing yeah. to the ground and I had to walk through as they shattered on the floor. Mm. And one of the things that, that um, the Lord really challenged me with was my expectations mm. and trusting him with my expectations. And one of the things that I've been learning in the midst of all of this is it's not, a, it, it's not looking at what I don't have. It's looking at what I do have. Mm. So um, I don't have biological children I could spend mm. my days miserable about that but I have lots of kids <laughs> yeah. I've got nephews and nieces and mentees and and other kids around in life and so um I think my nephews and nieces think I'm crazy but I send them <laughs> handwritten cards <laughs> once a month yeah because they're what I do have they're God's yeah. gift to me mm. and so and I want to be a gift to them mm. and so that shift that realizing that, that my thinking, my expectations have been shattered. But there are things God has given me. I, I remember having a moment with God saying, oh, but I don't have. And I remember him, I don't have kids. And he mm. was, I really felt him say, but yes, you do. Mm. And so that has been really helpful for me in terms of coping is shifting my, my attention to what I do have and then investing in that and enjoying the things wow. I do have. Yeah. So w what has helped you cope in the midst of all that you've faced? Just to piggyback on what you just said, I remember a time in the hospital, um, I was on life support in the form of water and nutrition, and I needed to get up and move because mm -hmm. that's important for the kind of surgeries that I had recovery-wise. Um, but I just couldn't bring myself to do mm -hmm. it. And I felt the Lord speak to me and say, mm -hmm. um, I want you to be grateful. <laughs> I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> grateful for I what? I am all cut up. It's my third time. Everything was just totally gutted out. And I, I'm like, I, I don't think I can. Mm -hmm. and, but the verse came, you know, mm -hmm. in all circumstances. Pastor mm -hmm. Adam mentioned it in his, uh, 
in a sermon, but uh, in all circum all things, give thanks for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And I was like, darn. But what I did was I, I, I made a gratitude list, kind of like you focusing mm. on your, and that gratitude list changed my perspective. It was yeah. amazing. Yes. The anxiety, the fear, mm -hmm. you know, it just mm -hmm. really helped me cope with it. I think um, what I would like to say, Victoria, is that, um, so I've been running the cancer support group mm -hmm. here at Walnut Hill for 14 years now, believe it wow. or not. Keith and I started yes. it 14 years ago. And, um, and also I've been helping out with Cel Celebrate Recovery. Mm -hmm. Recovery for me has been a big part of my life because the foundation of recovery is brokenness, is powerlessness. And so mm -hmm. I've really gone into that in my mm -hmm. own recovery journey. Um, but I, I've traveled with so many people mm -hmm. in their cancer journeys from sure. diagnosis to end of life, passing, mm -hmm. survival, whatever mm -hmm. happened. Um, and I've asked the cancer people mm -hmm. many times, you know, what's the most important aspect about your journey that gets mm -hmm. you through it? Sure. That, uh, that helps you cope. Yeah. Everyone says the same thing, acceptance. Mm. And so acceptance for me is a, is a big concept. I mean, yeah. in recovery, we have the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept those things that mm -hmm. I can't change. Mm -hmm. Acceptance has to do with control for me. Yeah. Um, and which is all about surrender and trust and all that. And I emphasize to people in the cancer ministry that we go through a grief cycle. Mm -hmm. when, when the cancer diagnosis is given, yeah. your, your life is impacted, it's mm -hmm. changed. Or when Sweet. you get, you know, and, and there's, a, there's loss and there's mm -hmm. grief. And, and I used to think that I had to white knuckle my way through that and, mm -hmm. and then as I began to really uh, look at the scriptures and hear from other people, mm -hmm. David laments in two thirds mm -hmm. of Psalms. He laments, he's real yes. with God and he goes through, yes. and Job, what he goes through when he, he laments, Jeremiah lamentations, mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. And so I know when I'm talking with people and when I'm going through it, that it's okay mm -hmm. to have those tough emotions like mm -hmm. uh, fear, anger, mm -hmm. and sadness. Yeah. And so what I do is I, every day I ask myself that I, you know, am I struggling today with fear, anger, and sadness? And I sort of go behind it. I try to be honest with myself mm, there you it's, go. and God and others, uh -huh. but I, I go behind it and, um, and, you know, what's at the root of this? What's triggering this? Mm. To not label those emotions like bad, mm -hmm. but just to say, hey, God's wired me with emotions. I'm an emotional being. And so God's going to speak to me through it. Mm -hmm. But I know what it's like to get stuck mm -hmm. in, for instance, sadness or anger or that. Mm -hmm. And it's not a good place to be. Yeah. So what I try to do is uh, remind myself, what does God have to say about mm -hmm. that emotion? You know, mm -hmm. where am I with this? Mm -hmm. um, you know, David, when he goes through a psalm and he, he, he presents the issue, you know, yeah. my enemies are all around me yeah. and I'm depressed. Uh -huh. God deliver me. Yeah. And, and in the end, he always praises God. It, mm -hmm. it amazes me. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's that point of getting to, mm -hmm. wow, can I praise God in yeah. this? Can I turn it over to him? Can I release this mm -hmm. to him? Um, and I think, you know, our serenity prayer has, has a phrase that says accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Uh, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. Who wants to accept hardship? I say to the Lord all the time, why couldn't I have an ice cream ministry, a hot fudge Sunday ministry? There you go. We all <laughs> sit around and eat hot fudge. You'd you know. then be an obesity ministry or something <laughs> yeah, I mean, like yeah. that, possibly. That's what CR, yeah. But I, um, you know, I've traveled with people like for instance we had somebody in our church not that long ago and I would and I know you know about this because I know about your your ministry chaplain ministry mm -hmm. up at Danbury Hospital but I was entering her room as the doctor was leaving telling her that we're all we're all done mm -hmm. we're removing everything mm -hmm. so she had to face imminent death mm -hmm. and um and all I did was hold her hand as mm -hmm. she wept Yes. And she wanted me there. She told her husband, because they had a very, very close marriage. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to mm -hmm. weep and mm -hmm. to be angry. I mean, man, when I look at Job, mm -hmm. 
Mm. Here's a guy that lost everything, yeah. right? His family, his health, his business, everything. And, um, and then he had three friends come who were of no help, yeah. told him it was his fault pretty much. And he had a lot to say to God, yeah. wish I'd never been born, all this kind of stuff. Yes. In fact, sometimes when I'm reading, I'm like, wow. Yeah. But God never scolds him for saying mm -hmm. that. He shows him how he's sovereign. That's the other thing is that when we talk about scriptures, for me, the first downloads when I was in the hospital was the Romans chapter 8, 30, 38 and 39 verses that nothing can separate me from the mm. love of God in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Yes. Life and death, nothing. Yeah. So Jesus, lo that love that God, mm. that God has for me through Jesus. And then, and then the other thing is... Um, which has really been tremendous is that God and Romans 8, 28, 8, and God causes all things to work mm -hmm. together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And I, when I'm going through suffering, I know there's a purpose and a plan mm -hmm. in this, mm -hmm. you know, that he's going to use it, yeah. but I have a choice to make. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it, it comes back down to back around to that idea of what are we saying yes to? And, and ultimately, yeah. it's saying yes to God. My um, abiding memory of seeing you in the hospital was when we, well, you're lying there, Clive and I are there, and um, the hymn came to mind. It is well, yeah. it is well with my soul. It was the most precious moment. Yeah, yeah. You know, faced with probably most likely death from yeah. this, disease but yet you and Clive were there and we had a beautiful mm. by the way your singing was better I just want to <laughs> for the record thank you <laughs> but yeah um that's why I love support groups mm. you know and what we do when we travel to together I need yeah. people when I yeah. go through these things you know yeah and so in this moment for those of you who are watching we we have no desire to try and whitewash and make pain any easier. It, it hurts mm. and it's confusing. And uh, there can be a journey in the midst of pain to be able to accept, to um, find um, God's peace and his presence in the midst mm. of that moment. And we struggle with different things. And so please don't... Um, Oh, well, my suffering isn't as bad as Peter's, therefore it doesn't count. No, your suffering is your suffering. Mm. But you know, at the end of that sermon, after all those shattered panes of glass, um, in my mind's eye had fallen, um, and I had shared that story of that sense that the, the panes were shattering, and I, and I needed to not live with those expectations, but seek after um, God and what his plan was, uh, a 20-something-year-old young woman in our church um, wrote a poem, mm. and she gave it to me later. And the poem suggested that those shattered pieces of glass would become a stained glass window. Mm. And my hope and my prayer, I, I believe it's not just mine, it's ours, right? Mm -hmm. Our hope and our prayer mm -hmm. is that for you, in whatever a season of suffering looks like, whatever that pain and struggle whether it's health or family or, mm. or um, marriage, children, no children, singleness, whatever that season is, whether we've mentioned it or not, that in the midst of the pain and of the struggle, my prayer is that you might find mm. God's peace in his presence. That somehow, whether you're a fighter or not, that you might come to a place where you're able to say yes and that you might know that the Lord is doing something beautiful in you. See, I see something beautiful in you as you mm. share, and I'm so grateful to God for what he's done. But I believe he does it in all of us mm. as we seek after him. So may he bless you this day. May you know his peace. And may we be a people mm. that can say yes to God, even in seasons of suffering. Mm.